What's going on guys, it's Eddie with DIY Basics. Welcome back to the channel. I just wanna go over how we install drain pipes when it comes to either kitchen sinks or bathroom sinks and uh, how they how the system comes together. I remember uh, back in the day, I would always get confused when I needed to do a repair and, and I look under the sink and you know you have your glue up system, which is completely different than the tubing system. And I, I would confuse them a lot because uh, you know, you're trying to, you're trying to make a repair and a lot of times there's, there's a glue up situation and, and you don't really know how to transition from one system to the other. So, uh, today I just wanted to go over what you should be working with when you're under your sink, whether it's a, a bathroom or a kitchen to two different sizes that you're going to be dealing with mostly, which, uh, for a bathroom, you're always going to be dealing with inch and a quarter and for kitchen, it's always going to be inch and a half. That's the standard. But when I say that I'm talking about, the pipe that comes down from the from the sink itself into the trap the waste arm leading into the wall and that's behind the wall you're probably always going to have like a two inch pipe usually reduced to inch and a half coming out of the wall and in that situation what you're going to be what you're going to see is you're going to see a uh, a trap adapter so if it's a, a pipe coming out of the wall inch and a half you'll have a inch and a half trap adapter which will be a glued uh, connection here, inch and a half to inch and a half threads for an inch and a half system. Or if, if you're going with a inch and a quarter system, then what you need to do is you need to get a reducing trap adapter that goes from inch and a half to inch and a quarter so that you can then um, have what you need to tie in. So that, that's really what it, where, where, the, where the difficulties come in is usually where the transitions happen from one size to another and what's available to, to make that transition so you can make it work. So just to go over a little bit of the nomenclature, uh, so what we're dealing with is this is called a waste arm. This is your trap, right? Uh, and this is uh, the tailpiece. Now in kitchen sinks, what you'll have is you'll have a tailpiece that connects to the sink uh, strainer. One important piece of information is the gasket that goes in the connection between the tailpiece and the sink strainer. The sink strainer is going to come with its own uh, slip nut and it's usually metal. All the other ones in a plastic system will be plastic like these. So what happens is you see this little washer here. It has like, it looks like I always describe it as like a little hat, but it's got a flange on it. And what it does is it sits inside the pipe like this. And that goes up against the thread and then you'll have a you'll have a metal uh nut just like this that'll screw onto the strainer and like i said it comes included with the strainer so this is a very very important uh piece to the puzzle and a lot of times people use the wrong washer they'll use something like this uh they do they do sell flat ones that a lot of times you'll see that come with the strainer and you can use those but these tend to work better because what it does is it, it holds the washer inside the pipe where it can't move around. A lot of the ones that sometimes come with the strainer, they're, they're just circular like this and they have little thickness to them. But when you set them down on the pipe, they have the uh, possibility to move around. And when you're trying to, when you're trying to screw it on and tighten up your nut, a lot of times if it moves and that's where you lose your seal. So I think that these are great they fall right into the pipe and they cannot be moved so once you line them up and you screw them in usually you're in good shape so a lot of times what you're going to have as well is you're going to be you're going to have an inch and a half all the way out to the p-trap and then you're going to have an inch and a quarter coming down from your uh <clears throat> from your tailpiece to the bathroom sink which is usually going to be an inch and a quarter right so what we do in those situations is we use a reducing uh washer and what it does is it wraps around the inch and a inch and a quarter pipe, but it can drop. It can drop into the inch and a half, and it seals. Let's do this the right way. When you put it in there and you screw it, right? I'll show you what it what it does. See what it does, that washer takes up that space there and that's what creates the seal. So it's a reducing washer from inch and a quarter to inch and a half, right? Otherwise, 
if you're going with a straight inch and a half pipe coming down from from say a sink a sink drain then you can use an inch and a half pipe and you can use an inch and a half washer uh, if you notice these washers have cones right so where it's tapered down is where you want it to be actually going into the fitting so the tapered part goes down like that so when you make that connection and you compress these as you're tightening it makes a really really good seal with regards to these slip nuts all right you want to hand tighten everything all right remember back in the day when i was doing this stuff i'd get frustrated because i think i would over tighten everything and maybe strip things out and, and i would actually cause the leak myself and then there's no turning back so uh, these these systems are like you know light pressure systems. They're not really a high pressure system. So as long as you have a decent seal, you're not going to have any leaks. But the 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 secret is connect everything by hand. Give it a nice little turn. As soon as you feel that grip, it makes a nice seal with the rubber. You're probably in good shape. Do everything by hand. Connect everything. Then you run the water. If you're getting a little trickle or something, then you go ahead and you torque it down a little bit more until it actually stops but if you try to determine what's good enough before you even run water through it you may be the culprit for causing uh it to leak because you went above and beyond what it needed to seal you know it's it's a feel thing for the most part but you'll know i mean if you can't turn the pipe and you've turned it by hand you already know you're 95 98 percent there right you run that water you should have a good seal and the most important part is going to be these washers right like I said, you're going to have a reducing washer, inch and a half to inch and a quarter. You're going to have your uh, your flanged uh, washer. This is for your tail pieces coming down. And then you're going to have your standard inch and a half washer, right? And make sure that the cone is facing down into the pipe that's going into. Guys, the way I like to uh, install the waste arm is I like to take uh, the cone-shaped washer and I wrap it around this flange on the pipe. And then I insert it. Take your slip nut, you screw it in. Snug it down and it makes a really nice watertight connection. These pipes are plastic, so a lot of times you might get, you know, a little cross threading or the thread might be uh, torn away or broken or something and that might be the cause for the leak too so don't drive yourself crazy if you if you if you did everything the way i just explained and you're still getting a little bit of a trickle a little bit of a trickle listen return it to the store get a new one and that is probably going to solve your problem because a lot of times it's not in the installation a lot of times it's in the material if the materials aren't quality materials if it's not the threads aren't nice and clean like this that's a big problem and that, and that causes a lot of the leaks that you deal with i hope uh, this information helps we'll see you on the next one thanks